Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear students. I hope you all are fine. Today we are going to start with the chapter number 18, Bees. And I'm your teacher, Maria Hakan. I want you all, while reading the text, to pay attention on some of the essential aspects of the text, including the appearance of the text on the page, definition and explanation of new or important terms used in the chapter. The use of diagrams and labeling to illustrate information. The use of an objective and authoritative tone. A focus on educating instead of entertaining. Dear students, the chapter B's is different from the other chapters in this book. It is a work of non-fiction compared to the stories and poems which the students have read. Reading a non-fiction piece in the classroom requires developing in students an appreciation of the unique features of non-fiction. It is important to understand that the purpose of non-fiction is to provide knowledge that can help expand your understanding of the world you live in. Its purpose is not so much to entertain as it is to inform and to educate. So let's start reading the text. I want you all to open page number 174 of Oxford Reading Circle of your book. It's the chapter number 18, Bees. In the British Isle, there are over 200 different kinds of bee, but the favorite is the hive or a honey bee. In early times, before the days of cheap sugar, the honey bee was very important. For not only did she produce honey for sweetening food and for making meat, but she also produced wax. The honey bee, much smaller than the big noisy bee we often see, is more like a wasp and from early spring until late autumn, we can find her at work in orchards and gardens. We may even see her in the winter, for on mild days she will fly around. However, she is very quiet in her work. Only two of the many kinds of bees that we have are social. They live together as a colony and those are bumblebee and the honeybee. But there are differences between them. Honeybees are social the whole year around. Bumblebees are social only in the summer. In the early autumn, the workers and the drones die and only the young queens are left to hibernate. Bumblebees do not store honey. The natural hun home of the honeybee is in a hollow tree. Here the workers having gorged themselves with honey and clustered quietly for about 24 hours Bill waxing comes from the small scales of wax which appear in the wax pockets in the abdomen. In these combs, the, they rear their brood and store honey. Until recent years, they were kept in straw hives and little were known of the work they did inside. Moreover, they had to be killed at the end of the season so that the honey might be taken. Today they are kept in wooden hives and provide with wooden frames containing sheets of wax on which they build their combs. Beekeepers can thus easily remove the combs. During the winter, the quiet time for bees, they cluster on the combs containing food and will number one queen and something like 20,000 workers. But in the sum, uh, summer, there will be about 80,000 workers and hundreds of drones. In each hive, there is only one queen. She is the mother of the colony and an egg-laying machine. The number of eggs she laid depends upon the amount of food fed to her by the workers. In the summer, she may lay 3,000 a day in shape. She is longer than the workers and walks on the comb with her wings folding, folded across her back. 
She has no vex pockets or pollen baskets on her back legs. Her sting is curved and rarely used against humans. She may live as long as five years, but by that time she is well past her best. It is usual for beekeepers to replace her at the end of her second season. This is known as dequeening. The drone male bees are the largest in the colony. Their only duty is to fertilization of the young queens. They have no sting and do not work in the hive. On the approach of the autumn, the workers turn them out of the hive to die. The workers who are imperfect females specially fitted for the work do all the work of the hive. They work so hard that in the summer they live only for about six weeks. There is little work to do in the winter and then they live for about six months. Almost as soon as they are born they start to work and spend the first two weeks inside the hive. They clean out the cells for the queen to lay eggs, feed and clean the queen, attend to the grubs, guard the hive against robber bees and wasps. They also fan with their wings not only to keep the hive cool but also to help in the re ripening of the honey. Then they start to work outside the hive collecting water, propolis, nectar and pollen. They require the water at breeding time to thin down the honey to make food for grubs and a strong stalk will collect as much as one pint a day. Propolis, a gummy substance they collect from trees, is used as a cement to stop up services and to make things secure. But bees do not collect honey, they gather a sweet liquid called nectar which is secreted by the flowers to attract visitors. The nectar, much of which is water, is carried home in the honey sack inside the bee's body and on the journey home and after being placed in the cells, much of the water is driven off. This is part of the process of changing nectar into honey and is known as ripening. The honey sack of a bee holds about one-fifth of a drop of nectar and it is estimated that if one bee could collect one pound of honey, which, is, which it cannot, it would have to fly a distance equal to twice around the globe. The pollen is gathered for use as food by the bees. It is part of a process called pollination. It becomes entangled in the body hairs of the bees and it transferred from flowers to flower, resulting in the production of fruit and seed. Pollination is the real work of the honey bee and in that way she helps in the production of foods such as fruit and field crops. All the pollen is not required for the pollination and she flies from flower to flower. She combs it from herself and packs it into the pollen basket she has on her back legs. Then on reaching the hive, it is placed in the cells and the bees pack it down hard by hitting it with their hats. The eggs from which the grubs hatch are tiny but they ha have a yolk and a shell. On the third day, the egg hatches into a grub. This is fed by the workers and on the ninth day the cell is sealed over with a capping of wax and pollen. Then wonderful changes take place inside the cell. The larva turns into the perfect insect and finally buys its way through the capping. Two sorts of eggs are laid by the queen. One is not fertilized and is, it produces the drone. The other is fertilized and turns into either a worker or a queen according to the type of cell in which it is laid and to the food which is fed to the grub which hatches from it. If it is to produce a queen, it is laid in a queen cell which hangs upside, upside down on the comb and looks like a peanut, while the grub which hatches from it is fed on a very rich food called royal jelly. Most of the cells forming a comb are worker cells, small and six-sided and are used either for brood, rearing or for the storage of honey. 
when a grub is hatched in those cells it is fed on less rich food and turns into a worker a very different insect from a queen the main part of a hive is the brood chamber containing large combs it is the bees permanent home and is used for brood rearing and the storage of honey in the honey season chambers containing smaller combs and called supers are placed above the brood chambers and there the bees store honey which is to be extracted to prevent the bees store honey which is to be extracted to prevent the queen laying eggs in the supers a uh, slotted metal sheet a queen excluder is placed over the brood chamber it allows the worker but not the larger queen to pass through when the combs in the super are filled with honey the cells are sealed by the bees which with a capping wax and they are then ready for removal for extraction to do this the bee keeper uses a board a board known as an escape board which is placed between the super and the brood chamber in it is a useful device which allows the bees to leave the super but prevents their return the super now empty for bee of bees is then removed but before extraction can be performed the wax capping first having have to be sliced off with a hot knife the combs are placed in an extracting machine in which they are whirled round the throwing out the honey the honey is then passed through a strainy tank so that all the particles may be removed if the honey season is still on the empty combs are placed in their racks and put back on the hive to be free filled but if the honey season is over they are put back on the hive to be cleaned up by the bees and are then packed up in readiness for next season some combs are not extracted and these are the small scales of combs called sections which are sold almost as they are taken from the hive these are most expensive as new combs have to be built by the bees each year in the honey season should the supers are not be placed on the hive and sometimes even when they are the hive becomes overcrowded with bees brood and honey and it is at such times that the queen and several thousand of bees will leave the hive to find a new home this is known as swarming but not all the bees leave in the swarm but several thousands are left behind together with plenty of food and brood and one or more queen cells It is from one of these cells that a young queen will be born and after she is mated will become the mother of the stock. As to the swarm the bee fly round and round and finally settle in a huge cluster. There they will rest for a time and if not collected by a beekeeper they will fly off to make a new home in a hollow tree or in the roof of a house. Swarming is a great no- nuisance to the beekeeper and means a loss of honey to him especially if he loses a swarm for it means he has lost 30000 or more bees there are many methods of trying to prevent it and the principle in them all is to prevent overcrowding in the hive in most of them the stock have to be examined and that is known as manipulation Most people think of bees as insect with sting and forget that as the bee dies after stinging she generally uses her sting as a weapon of defense everything depends upon the way in which they are handled if the beekeeper is cool calm and collected does not make jerky movements and if he works with the bees when the weather is not wet windy or thundery the bees will not be inclined to sting The beekeeper uses a thin veil made of black silk net to prevent an angry bee from stinging him. He will also have a chisel like appliance called a hive tool to he- help him remove the combs and parts of the hive stuck down with pros- propolis. But his most important appliance is the smoker consisting of a firebox and nozzle fixed to a pair of small bellows. 
In the firebox, he burns cor corrugated paper or old sacking. When the smoke from this smoldering material is puffed into the hive, the bees become frightened, gorge themselves with honey, and are less bad tempered. Towards the end of the summer, the queen lays fewer eggs and the combs are filled with honey for use by the bees as winter food. As the weather grows colder, the bees fly less. In the winter, they cluster quietly together on the combs containing food and there they remain until the spring. Although the real work of the honey bee is the pollination of flowers, their importance to the beekeeper is, to, is the production of honey. The amount one stock will produce depends on the countryside for bees have a flying range of about 2 miles also upon the weather and the skill of the beekeeper. It may be a few pounds per hive or maybe as much as 200 pounds but in addition to the honey she is taken from them. The bees require some as food after all it is their honey. Here is the end of the chapter, reading of the chapter. So let's start with the question answering of this chapter. Where your first question is, how many different kinds of bees are said to live in the British Isles? So the answer is over 250 different kinds of bees are said to live in the British Isles. Question number two is what important thing things do pro bees produce for making honey sweetening food and for making wax question number three what are two differences between honey bees and the bumblebees the answer is the honey bee is much smaller than the big noisy bee which is more like a wasp honey bees are social all years round whereas bumblebees are social only in summers your question number four is what are the benefits of using hives answer is hives help the bees remove combs earlier bees are killed but now they can live in hives and produce their combs question number five is how long do worker bees live for the answer is worker bees live for five years Next question is how many worker bees can be found in a hive in the summer? Answer is 80,000 worker bees can be found in a hive in the summer. Question number 7. What do worker bees do in the hive and outside the hive? So answer is inside the hive they clean out for the queen to lay eggs, feed and clean the queen, attend to grub and guard the hive against robbers, bees and wasps. They also fan their wings to keep the hive cool and to rip the honey. Outside the hive, they collect water, propolis, nectar and pollen. Next question is, how much watery nectar can a strong stock of bees collect in a day? So the answer is one point a day watery nectar can be st strong stock of bees collect. What is a propolis and what is it used for? Answer is a gummy substance collected by honeybees to fill the crevices and to fix and varnish honeycomb. Next question is what is the real work of bees? Answer is the real work of bees is pollination of flowers and production of honey. Your next question is how is the honey extracted by bees from honeycombs? The answer is the nectar which is much of the water, much of water is carried home in the honey sack inside the bee's body and on the journey home and after being placed in the cells much of the water is driven off. Thus nectar is changed into honey. Question number 12 is what is the bee's flying range? Your answer is a bee's flying range is about 2 miles. Question number 13. What is swarming and what negative impact can it have on beekeepers? Overcrowding in the hive is called swarming. Loss of honey is a negative impact to the beekeepers. Next question is what tools and equipment does a beekeeper use and what are they for? 
The tools used by a keep keeper are a smoker consisting of a firebox and nozzle fixed to a pair of small billows to prevent an angry bee from stinging him. Can you imagine a world without bees? What would be missing from such world? For this question, the answer is a world without bees would have very little plant growth. We would have less flowers and plants for food. Animals and birds would not have enough food to eat. It would be a very bleak world indeed. Answer may vary. You can write it by yourself. Come to the reference to the context. You can see these reference to context part B, first part and second part. In your book, in first, the honey sack of a bee holds about one fifth of a drop. Where your first question you can find is what is nectar and where do bees get it from so for this answer is the sweet liquid collected by bees is called nectar they get it from the flowers second question is what is mixed in with the nectar that the bees collect what is the process of getting rid of most of this called the answer is Water is collected. This process is called ripening. C part. How many times would a bee have to fill its honey sack in order to collect one drop of nectar? Answer is, a honey, a bee would have to fill it its honey sack twice to collect one drop of nectar. Now the second part. Everything depends upon the way in which they are handled. For this statement, and question is, how should they be handled? The answer I've written is, if the beekeeper is cool, calm, and collected, and if he does not jerk, the bees will not sting. Second question is, what happens if they are mishandled? The answer is, if they are mishandled, they will sting. For the last question, what weather conditions are ideal? The weather should not be wet, thundery or windy. Come to the third part, words and meanings, in which your first question is look up the meaning and use these words into sentences. Your task is to make the sentences by your own and the meaning I'm going to mention over there. For the drone, it means burst. For calm, it means search, and the last one, rear, it means bring up. Second question is complete the sentences below using the listed <coughs> listed words in the blanks. First statement is bees are important to food production because they dash flowers. For completing this pollination, bees are important to food product food uh, important to food production because they pollinate flowers b statement is in order to stop bees from swarming beekeepers check on their stock and skill it to prevent manipulate third one is the amount of honey that a overcrowding of bees produce is depend on the weather of the beekeeper and the type of surrounding out countryside for the last one bees are not inclined to sting if the beekeeper is cool calm and collected and does not make jerky movements that's it from my side if you find any difficulty you can ask from me thank you a lot